بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد أيها الإخوة الكرام فأسأل الله العلي العظيم بأسمائه الحسنى وصفاته العلى أسأله باسمه الأعظم الذي إذا سئل به إذا سئل به أجاب إذا دعي به أجاب وإذا سئل به أعطى سبحانه وتعالى أن يجمعني وإياكم في مستقر رحمته وأن يشرح صدورنا وإياكم لاتباع سنة نبيه صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وأن يحيانا عليها وأن يحشرنا في زمرة نبيه صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم يوم الدين وأن يدخلنا وأزواجنا وذرياتنا وأهلينا الجنة من غير سابقة عذاب وبعد أيها الإخوة الكرام Dear brothers and sisters I'm supposed to give this lecture in English which really I don't like to do but since the brother يعني, forced me to give the lecture in English that I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help me to deliver the message right and straight to myself first then for you we gather today to talk about the morals in Islam to talk about akhlaq but I'm sorry to say when we talk about akhlaq حينما نتكلم عن الأخلاق I'm sorry to say some people think we are talking about something it's recommendations it's something from fadail al-a'mal akhlaq it's fadail al-a'mal it's something it's good to do it good to have it but in fact this is wrong this is a big mistake that fadail al-a'mal or I mean the akhlaq it's not from that view only as a fadail al-a'mal al-akhlaq minha ma huwa wajib wa minha ma tarkuhu kabirah min kaba'il al-dhunub wa minha ma huwa sunnah min al-sunan wa fadail al-a'mal the morals, the akhlaq some of it, it's obligations some of the akhlaq the behavior of the Muslims the way he behaved his manners, if he left it, it will be kabira min kabair al dunub a major sin. And some of us, akhlaq, it's a recommendation, or highly recommended, to have it or to practicing it. So, first of all, we need to change this idea in our mind that when we're talking about akhlaq, that means we're talking about something recommended, it's not something you have to do. Which is people feel sometimes when we're talking about the akhlaq that he, is, he doesn't have to do it or to practicing it. And that's totally wrong. Because when you're talking about akhlaq, we're talking about things, it might be obligation on every single Muslims. And some of them, if you lift it, it will be, or you're practicing in the wrong way, it will be a major sin. Like the ghiba. Pack pipe. If you're talking bad about people in their in their absence, it's riba, which is one of the kabir amin kabair dunub. If you talk about, if we give example, for example, the namima, kabir amin kabair dunub, which is talking bad between the people, saying that person did such and such, and the other person did such and such. And the Prophet ﷺ said, The Jannah was forbidden to enter by one who is making namima, who's talking bad between the community to say that man says such and such and that man says such and such to make problems, to make fights between the communities or between the Muslims and the man. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give an example Worst example for that man who is practicing ghiba That he looks like a man eating his brother's 
uh, meat or his brother body flesh which is something disgusting because riba it's disgusting too and you will see that the behavior the manners the moral the Islam as you hear today from Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Maqsud it's the thing was the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was sent with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam حَصَرَ رِسَالَتَهُ حَيْثُ قَالَ إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ لِأُتَمِّمَ مَكَارِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said I was sent to to what? to what? to complete the manners to become a good manners to have people having a good manners but here when he said I was sent for that somebody might ask what about he was sent for ibadatillah to order people to worship Allah only but you will see that whoever became a disbeliever that he is he is not, he has not have that good manners or good behavior or his moral is not right with his Lord which is the worst kind of uh, behavior that he is not obeying his Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brothers كان الإمام أحمد رحمه الله Imam Ahmad used to sit to him 5,000 person. 5,000 person. Yidrish ulay khamsat alaf. Less than 500 writing the hadith. Less than 500 writing the hadith. And the rest of them, they are learning from his behavior. How he behave. How he act. Rahimahullah ta'ala. And Imam Ahmad rahimahullah was sick لما كان في مرض موته he was told about a scholar وكان متكئا rahimahullah كان متكئا he was like lie down and they mention a scholar you know what he did he sat down then he was told ya imam you don't need to do that you are sick ما يحتاج تجلس قال ما ينبغي لنا إذا ذكر الصالحون أن نتكئ he said it was, it's not right for us when the righteous people names mentioned to just lie down no we have to sit respecting them that person was full of manners morals a good behavior the people used to travel travel a distance to see the scholar to learn from his simt from the way he behaved the way he talk like an Imam Al-Awza'i rahimahullah people used to just look at him how he behaved and Sufyan al-Thawri rahimahullah ta'ala said before we start writing hadith became a student of knowledge became before that we used to spend 20 years learning learning behavior and how to be righteous people كنا نمضي 20 سنة كان الرجل قبل أن يكتب الحديث يؤمر بالتعبد والتأدب 20 سنة 20 years they will order him to behave and become righteous a person who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so much before he starts saying claim that he is student of knowledge and maybe the number is exaggerating the number a large number of years but it, it has it means something for us which is the people should learn I remember an Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah his mother prepare him to send him to Medina to seek knowledge from Imam Malik وَكَانَ الإمام مالك الإمام الشافعي صغيرا لما أهيأته أمه قالت اذهب إلى مالك فتعلم من أدبه قبل علمه 
She said to him, go to Malik, seek knowledge. But before seeking knowledge, learn from his behavior, before you're learning his knowledge. The manners was something so valuable in Islam. In the scholar's time, in our Salaf al-Salih, rahimahumullah ta'ala, they used to say, the value is things for men, for, fem- for male, it's what, how they behave. Or the, the thing make the men looks good, the way they behave. Exactly like when the female or the woman wear gold and make themselves beauty by wearing something, but the man he can make himself beauty, uh, looks beautiful, looks good, by the way he behave, the way he talk, the way he act. What we mean by manners, behaviors, morals in Islam? Today the Shaykh mentioned many things about behaving or having a good morals, adab, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'm not going to repeat what the Shaykh said today, but I would just like to uh, mention something very previous or very quickly. Look at how the, the Sharia, the Deen teaching us how to behave, how to behave ourselves with our Lord first of all. Full of respect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First, when you pray in the Salah, you're not allowed to, you're not allowed to look up to the sky when you pray. And the Prophet sallallahu warned the person who looking up, who make his sight up to the sky that the angels might take his sight. He became blind. And al jahmiya with a deviant sect, they thought that means Allah is not in the sky, it means He's in everywhere or under your knee. Because they didn't know the secret or the meaning behind, behind that, behind this point. Which is, when you pray and putting your you're lowering your gaze, or you're putting your eyes, looking at the place you're making sujood. This is a way of a behavior that you show you're humble to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you go to the king, if you go to any king now, or president, and you go to the king looking like this to him, like looking like that, it's a disrespect. But what if you go to the king looking down? You said, that he's humble, he's... It's a good way of behave. When you stand up in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while you're praying, that means that you are putting your eyes down, respecting Him so much. And look to the other things. How we will, what we will do while we're praying, brothers? Where you put your hand? As mentioned in Mu'ta, uh, Imam Malik, that they, they have been ordered to put the right hands above the left hands. The left, uh, right hands above the left hands. And on chest. Just think about this situation. Just imagine now yourself standing like this, or like this, or like that, or like this. Which one is full of respect? Full of choice that you are so humble to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see what's different? You're just getting ready. You are saying that I'm your slave. Standing in front of you. Seeking your mercy. The way you stand up, the way you look like, it's itself a good behavior. Just imagine that. Now imagine this picture. This standing, as Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah said, full of humble. It shows that he is humble, that he is respecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so much. Look to other things. We've been ordered not to face the Kaaba while the person urine or he relieve his, uh, uh, relieve yani his natural things. Uh, he's not allowed to face the Kaaba or make the Kaaba behind him. Why? Why? Why you think? Respecting 
to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's house. The sunnah is teaching us how to respect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of these things take you to a point. All of this practicing, behavior practicing, every day five times, you stand up like this. In front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Putting your head down. And you go making sujood to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rukur, then sujood. Why? What's the result? The result when you've been ordered that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala order you. You're not allowed to deal with interest. You'll say, no, I will do, I have to do it. Where's the standing? Where's this practicing? What's happened to it? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered you're not allowed to sell alcohol or pork, or you're not allowed to eat this or to drink that. Where's that behavior? You are every day putting your head down, making sujood. And today you have to do it when He's ordering you. I mean, brothers, all the, the sharia, the rules in sharia, it's rules teaching us how to respect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nuh alayhi salam. Nuh alayhi salam. What he told his people. He told his people, مَا لَكُمْ لَا تَرْجُونَ لِلَّهِ وَقَارًا مَا لَكُمْ لَا تَرْجُونَ لِلَّهِ وَقَارًا Why are you not respecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And there is no one disobeying him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Unless he is not respecting him so much. Therefore the scholar said, don't look at the minor sins you did. But look how great he is subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one you disobey. لا تنظر إلى صغري ما عصيت ولكن انظر إلى عظمي من عصيت. Having uh, good manners or morals in Islam, when we're talking about the first, how to behave good with you, our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first meaning of that, obeying Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Obeying Him. Have full love to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when I'm saying love, I mean the love it means in Arab language. You know, love, this is the word, hub. In Arab language it means amazing meaning. Love in Arabic, يقولون حب الماء إذا ظهر في البئر يعني إذا ظهر وحب البعير إذا برك وحب القلب يعني لبه وأصله حب الشيء أصله وحب الأسنان بياضها ونقاؤها رب إبو سين حب الماء if the water appear comes up from the well the will it will still say حب الماء it means appear and if the the Arab said حب البعير when the camels settle down they call that حب which means it settle down and in Arabic language they use saying حب حب الأسنان when the kids the little kids when his tooth is white very white it, they call it حَبُّ الْأَسْنَانِ This tooth is حَبْ It means it's very clean, white And they said the seeds, they call it حَبْ Because the seeds is inside, it's the Like the apple, the seeds of the apple, the apples come from the seeds All the, the this comes from, all trees come from the seeds So to start from there, it's inside And the حُبْ in Arabic the hub, love, it means love, the real love, it means if something deep, deep inside in your heart, in the bottom of your heart, like the seeds, it's inside the apple. The, the love, it means, it love, it should appear in your actions, like the water appear. The love, it means that you have a clean heart. It's only for the person or the thing you love. Just only him. Because that is in love. Clean too. It's white. 
and we saying the love, the real love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala too, or the real love, it means too that it's settled down, it doesn't change, it doesn't move. Like the camel when you settle down. So when you're saying love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when I'm saying loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when I'm saying this word, it means that love, it's deep in, inside your heart. From the bottom of your heart, you love Him. When I'm saying loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I mean that love was no companion, no companion anyone with Him. This love, what we call it, hubbul ibadah, the love in secret, you love Him as you worship Him. Because you know, ibadah, the word ibadah, abada, you know, abada, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His name is ilah. Ilah, that's right, ilah. All of you maybe know this name. Ilah, this is fi'al bima'na maf'ul, which it means ilah, it looks like imam. What's imam means? Imam, it means mu'tammun bih. Yani people following him. Imam, it means people following him. And ilah, it means ma'luh, yani mahbub. Ma'luh, yani mahbub. You are saying that he is ilah, that means you love him. You fear him. You respect him. The, the meaning of ilah. When you say Allah, that means the thing you love and you fear and you obey. Because ilah it means ma'bud. And the abd, slave, it means he loves, he obey, he fears his master. Which I mean here in this uh, sentence, I mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he's saying, when we're talking about the manners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not from the good manners to disobey him. As one of the salaf was asked, somebody came to him and said, I want to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, if you want to disobey him, you have to go to a land where he couldn't see you. Or you have to disobey him in a land he doesn't own it. Or you have to disobey him in a place, in a place he couldn't hear you. He couldn't hear you. Or you have to disobey him, if you want to disobey him, that you have to get a guarantee letter from the angel of death that he's not going to take your soul in that moment. Or a letter from him that you are going to the Jannah. If you got one of these, go ahead and disobey him. It's possible? No. No, when he said, مَا لَكُمْ لَا تَرْجُونَ لِلَّهِ وَقَارًا Why you are not respecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Why you are not respecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When he said that to them, it tells us that there is no one will worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if really he has a good manners. Because the one who, who create you. قَدْ خَلَقَكُمْ أَطْوَارَ That He create you. Then you worship other, with Him to fight other and worship with Him. And I'm not going to spend much time talking about this because I believe Sheikh already did. I would like to talk more about respecting the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, Having a good manners, behavior, with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Also, the Islam teach us in a certain practicing ways, in some in ways, teaching us how to respect him, in giving some orders. For example, Allah subhanahu wa taala said, "Ya ayyuha al-ladina amanu la tuqaddimu bayn yadi Allahi wa Rasulih." And Allah subhanahu wa taala said. لا ترفع لا ترفع أصواتكم فوق صوت النبي لا تجعلوا دعاء الرسول بينكم كدعاء بعضكم لبعض. All of these orders, which it means, Allah subhanahu wa taala says, don't don't talk louder than the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. رواه الإمام البخاري. رحمه الله تعالى من حديث أنس رضي الله عنه أن ثابت بن قيس البخاري narrated that أنس 
said. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Don't talk louder than the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi Thabit ibn Qais, one of the Sahaba, his khatib. His voice is so loud, it's natural. He said, I'm now in the, in the, in the hellfire because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and tahbata a'malukum. That means all of my deeds has been rejected. Allah not accept from me anything. Because my voice is louder than him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then he didn't came to the Prophet, sallallahu He stay home. And this is the shaitan. He make tricks. Say stay home so you don't go. But in fact, he's not giving advice because brothers, shaitan never give advice. Wallahi, he never give advice. Even though if he swear, that he swear to Adam before. وَقَسَمَهُمَا إِنِّي لَكُمَا لَمِنَ النَّاسِ صحيح. He said, I swear by Allah that I'm advising you. And all of you, you know the story of that person who worshiped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah, and he's a righteous person. And then uh, when the three people, the three brothers, they left their sister with him. They left their sister with him and said, you are the righteous person here and we will want to keep. He said, no, no, I cannot. Tayyip, he said, uh, finally, he said, just build a, a room just next to my room. Then they put a room next to his room. Then they said, just yeah, I mean, watch out, yeah, I mean, take care of her and give her food. The uh, first day he, he gave the food and he left. After a while, he said, might somebody come and take the food or animal come and eat it? I have to make sure that she take. It's the shaitan giving him advice. You, it's responsibility. Allah is going to ask about this responsibility. Make sure that you, you deliver the, the message right. Then she opened the gate. He was what she said, Alhamdulillah, and back again. Next day he said, you're not having such a good akhlaq manners. You let her to get outside, take the food. Why you don't deliver the food inside the house so she keep her, nobody see her, keep her in, and in a good, uh, like a sister, it's your sister, you have to be worried about her. Maybe somebody, you see her opening the door, he might enter to the place. Okay, next time he opened the door and he put the food. He said, but the best thing to do to make your brother in Islam happy, you should, now how long she was been alone? She feels loneliness or alone. Why you don't go there and watch her while she's eating so she don't feel sad that she's alone. After a while, the best food, if many hands join, and there's a lot of hands in the food, so we should eat together. And after they eat together, after touching hands, after eyes to eye, and you know the rest. So, she gets pregnant. He said, oh, oh, now they were back again and it would be a problem. What will do? She said, I don't know. He said, kill your son. They killed the son, they buried the son. And the shaitan came, you think she will let you go with this? She will tear her brothers. So what do I have to do? Kill her. Advise. He's still advising him. You see? Wallahi, this is good for you. You, will be, you want everybody to say the righteous people, bad people? You have to cover, make tawbah, and cover your, your, your mistake. Then what he said, he killed the girl. Then after he killed her, he buried, the brothers came, he said, she died, and I buried her, she's there. The shaitan came to them saying, no, just check. When they checked, they found out she was killed. They taught him, and they pulled him out from his place, and they put him in a cross. Then the shaitan came to him. He said, now what? You have nothing to do. It. He said, what I can do? He's still, he didn't get the lesson yet. He's still listening to him, to the shaitan. The shaitan tell him, you want me to help you? He said, what you will do? He said, there's only one way to get you out from this. Shaitan, he never gave up. Until you reach a certain level, you will see it. He said, what? He said, make sujood to me. If you pray for me, I will take you out from this problem. Then after he made sujood, the shaitan ran away saying, A'udhu Billah. I make my God witness that you are a disbeliever. يَعِدُهُمْ وَيُمَنِّيهِمْ 
وَمَا يَعِدُهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ إِلَّا غُرُورًا He gave you wishes. I wish. I want to do that. He gave you advices. This is the way he did to Adam. وَقَسَمَهُمَا He swore by Allah that I'm giving, I'm an advisor, a sincere advice, a piece of advice to you. But then the shaitan tell him, stay home. But the Prophet وسلم, he's the one who looking after his friends, his companion. He said, where's Tabit? They said, he's afraid that he's a people among people of fire. He said, no, he's among those people in Jannah. And in Musnad al-Imam Ahmad, he said, sallallahu, he said, Anas radiallahu anhu. He said, then we used to say, there is a man among the people of Jannah, he's walking beside us, with us in the street. And he's the, he is a man of the people of Jannah. And until the, the, the Yamama, في معركة اليمامة he was killed the days after he encouraged the Muslim to fight مسيلمة هكذا وأخرج البخاري أيضا عن أبي مليكة أنه قال كذا الخيران أن يهلكا almost the two righteous people to be in a trouble in such big problem يهلكا be destroyed he means Abu Bakr and Umar. Because the Prophet ﷺ, it's a long story, just the Umar, he suggests a person to be a leader, and Abu Bakr, he suggests, uh, Abu Bakr suggests uh, a name, which is uh, Al-Qaqa, and Umar said, no, make the Amir Al-Aqra ibn Habis. Abu Bakr said, just you want to argue with me, argue with me. Then they start talking, have argument. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu la tuqaddimu bayna yadayillah. Bayna yadayillah wa rasu'i. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbid Muslims to talk before the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To fight in front of him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Talking about this religion before he talks sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Say do or not do to, or not to do before him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, before his sunnah. And they were so scared. And in the other narration, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they start talking louder than the Prophet. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لا ترفعوا أصواتكم فوق صوت النبي أن تحبط أعمالكم أنتم لا تشعرون. Don't talk louder than the Prophet So might your deeds, your good deeds, it will be destroyed. It will not be, it will not be valid. So, you know what happened? In the narration of Sayyid al-Bukhari, كان عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه عمر after this ayah, you know what he did? He used to talk to the Prophet so soft. Even my the Prophet sometimes ask him what he said. And Abu Bakr, he said, after that I will never talk to you until I'm talking to a person like I'm saying a secret, like soft talk. Like I'm telling you a secret, just whispering. He's only after this ayah, he was only whispering to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, afraid of being in a such terrible position. If Allah subhanahu wa taala said your deeds would be not valid or not acceptable, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Allah ordered the Muslims. If they are with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi they are not allowed to leave him and take until they will take permission from him. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَإِذَا كَانُوا مَعَهُ عَلَىٰ أَمْرٍ جَامِعٍ لَمْ يَذْهَبُوا حَتَّى يَسْتَأْذِنُوهُ They will not leave him until they will take permission from him. Why is that? Teaching. Teaching this ummah how to obey him. How to follow his steps Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. Teaching, practicing how to follow the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu steps, how to believe in every single word he's saying to us, and obeying every single order he's ordering us, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam, and to be satisfied with everything he said, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam, and you feel it's a sufficient for you. You don't need anything more than that. So that person, we told him that the Prophet said that, this or that, and he's still not, he said, oh, I will think about it. 
Subhanallah. Think about it. That I will see. I will see. La ilaha illallah. That man, he has no manners. He has no manners. He didn't know how to behave himself with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Or if you say, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says such and such, he will say, oh but this is a problem, what about if such and such? He start making examples for you. Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, kama fi sunan al-imam al-dimajah, that he said, at support in sunan al-dimajah, that the person, he should make wudu from the anything that uh, yani, touched the, the fire, anything cooked. Anything cooked, he should make wudu from it. Then one of the Sahaba said, what about the boiling water? If you heat water, then use this water to for wudu. You need to make wudu from the wudu. You know? You know what Abu Hurairah said? He said, Ya ibn Akhi, إِذَا حَدَّثْتُكَ عَنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم فَلَا تُضْرِبْ لَهُ الْأَمْثَالِ Brother, if I'm telling you a hadith and the Prophet وسلم, say such and such, don't give me an example, don't create things to make it look wrong. You have to say, I believe, I obey. Wallahi the Sahaba, very strange in this. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud he came late the Prophet called for the salah you know brothers he prayed behind the woman's lines because he came late as it's narrated in Musayh al-Imam Muslim then the Prophet stepped on his member and he said sit down Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said I was in that moment going to enter to the masjid. My left foot was outside and my right foot was inside. I swear by Allah, I didn't let the one outside to enter or I didn't take the one out inside outside. I just settled down in my place. I didn't move my foot inside or take it outside. I just settled down. When I hear him saying, sit down. This is the way that Sahaba Rabbanullahi alayhim used to do. The Sahaba Rabbanullahi alayhim, when he heard any order from the Prophet the first thing they will just go ahead and do it, doing it. And they have full respect for the Prophet Abu Bakr al-Siddiq with the Prophet was sick. The Prophet ﷺ entered to the masjid while the Abu Bakr praying. Then Abu Bakr, when he saw him, he goes back. He couldn't lead the prayer. He couldn't stand out front of the Prophet Muhammad It's impossible for him to have this respect. Umar ibn Khattab, radiyallahu anhu ardah. He saw Mizab Lil Abbas. Ra'a Mizab Lil Abbas. Mizab, it's like uh, a pipe. They put it in the mud house all time ago, long time ago, in the mud houses, and the roof. When the rain came in the roof, all the rain go to one corner, and it goes outside from this uh, pipe. This Mizab, okay? It's like a hole in the roof, and all the water comes out. This it was there and it might bother people while walking in the street. Then Umar radiallahu anh, he took it off. Then Al-Abbas said, Al-Abbas said, the Prophet sallallahu he is the one who put it there. You know what he did? He did a ruku'ah. Umar. Ruku'ah. He put his face down and he ordered Al-Abbas to step to stand up above his on his back to return it back and Al-Abbas stood up on the uh, Umar ibn Khattab's back to return it back this is the way 
And Al-Imam Ahmad Rahimahullah Yarwi fi musnadih Wal hakim fi mustadrakih That Abu Ayyub Al-Ansari When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Was in his house And he and his wife They were in upstairs And the Prophet downstairs there is a container of water fall down and the water start going he said I run to get a garment بِقَطِيفَةِ him and his wife going to try to take all to suck all the water by this garment before it will drop in the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu then he said Wallahi Ya Rasulullah I swear by Allah Ya Rasulullah I will never ever let you to be downstairs and I'm above you. It couldn't be happening. You should be upstairs and I'm under you. This is the way they used to be. Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah. Abu Ubaidah in Uhud, in the day of Uhud, when the Prophet ﷺ was injured. And there is like a piece of metal in his cheek, وسلم, bleeding, sallallahu alayhi wa Hurts him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Abu Ubaidah came to take it out. He said, "Wallahi, I couldn't take it by my hand. Afraid that I might harm, I might harm him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I take it by my tooth. Then the first tooth was broken. Then he did it to the other piece of metal, and it was broken too. Just afraid to harm the Prophet Muhammad." Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam And in the day of Uhud The Prophet sallam Came a little bit Has some fact on him Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam And he could claim a, a rock Then Talha Talha He came and he fell down And he let the Prophet sallam Step on him Then he will And he climbed the the rock sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and also the the siddiq of al-ansar Sa'd ibn Mu'adh radiyallahu anhu ardah when Bani Quraidah when happened with Bani Quraidah the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked Sa'd to be a judge between him and the Jewish he said I couldn't be you are the Rasulullah how comes I will be a judge and you are the Prophet he said that well, that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Allah chose Sa'd ibn Mu'ad to be the judge between the Rasulullah and the Jews then he said the judge he should deal with the both sides then he look at the Jews he said if I give you my judgment, you will take it? They said, yes. Then he should say the same thing to the Muslim sides. That's right. But how come he will say it in the Prophet ﷺ in the other hand, in the other side? Then he saw, he, radiallahu anh, he faced to the tent. Not facing the Prophet, facing other Muslims. Saying, and you too. Respecting Ijlal Ali Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He couldn't face him Just respecting Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And Umrad ibn Hussain He gave bay'ah to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam By his right hand He said after I give bay'ah to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam I never touch by my hand By my right hand My private parts Or in or my Yeah any part Just this that I remember I touched the Prophet ﷺ hands, I couldn't. Respecting him ﷺ. Umar ibn al-Khattab, he was in the army and the leader of the army is Usama. Is that right? Usama. Umar used to call him, you are my Amir, until he became Amir al-Mu'mini. Until he, after the Prophet ﷺ did. He said, because the Prophet called you Amir, so I have to call you Amir too. Just respecting for what the Prophet ﷺ. Al-Abbas was asked once, who's older? Who's, who's older? It's in Arabic, 
من أكبر like who's greater maybe if you just said like this he said he's أكبر من he's greater than me and I'm older than him and I was all I was born two years before him or a couple of years before him he didn't want to say I'm older than him he said no I was born before him he want to make it in a nice statement nice way respecting the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam Abdullah ibn Umar Abdullah ibn Umar ibn al-Khattab one of his sons once when he heard his father saying that the Prophet Sallam said don't, don't stop women from going to the masjid then his son said we're going to stop him this is Sahih Muslim we're going to stop him Umar فَلَكَ زَهُ لَكْزَةً شَدِيدَةً فِي صَدْرِهِ وَسَبَّهُ سَبَّمْ مَا سَبَّهُ قَطْ he insulted him he, he talked very bad to him and he, he like uh, punch him in his fist and or in his chest. So angry. How come that he said the Prophet said, don't stop and he's saying we are going to stop him. And he said, Wallahi la ukalimuka ba'daha abada. And he said, I will never talk to you ever again. And he didn't talk to him until his son was passed away. Al Hafid ibn Hajar qal wa la'allahu mahta ba'da dhalika biqaleel. Al Hafid ibn Hajar said he might pass away after that, after a while, not a long time. Why? For respecting the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu order. And today, when you tell the brother, "This is Sunnah," it means Jazakallah Khair. That means I'm not going to do it. Yes. Wallahi. Do you have ever heard any hadith the Prophet Sallallahu ordered the Sahaba something, and one of the Sahaba said, "Ya Rasulullah, is this obligation or Sunnah?" <laughs> you have ever heard something like this? Like today, come, people come to ask you a question and say, yes, but يعني, it's sunnah or wajib. What do you mean by that? It means if it's wajib, that means they have to be stuck with it. Uh, that, that's the meaning. He don't do it feeling that something, he make it closer to him. That's right or not? People think, sunnah, oh, alhamdulillah, that means I can't يعني, leave it. No, ya akhi. Makroh, that's good. Uh, that's good. No, it's makroh. It's not good. Do you have ever heard the Sahaba say, I have never say, I have never seen something like that in my life. When he orders something, they just follow it. When he said, don't, don't, means don't. But when today the people change, when the people change, their manners, their behavior be changed. Now, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu respecting his sunnah I'll give you, I will finish with this example The Prophet Sallallahu said If the fly fall down in your cup You have to push the fly down All the way down the, in the water Then Take it out If you want to drink it, drink it If you don't, don't One of those people says Wow, disgusting how come I will eat, drink from this water after the fly fill and put it down too? More? To make it more dirty? <laughs> he said that. Then after a while a German scholar, doctor, came with the research that the fly under the right wings, there is a disease. And the antibiotic for this disease, it's in the left wings or the opposite way. And the Prophet when he said he push it down, this bubbles, it has the disease or the cure, the antibiotic. When you push it, this bubble, it will, under the pressure, it will relieve the, 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 the cure or the, the medicine. Huh? The anti. Antidote. You know what he said the Sheikh? Oh, mashallah, that's good. He believed the doctors. He didn't believe the Muhammad <laughs> Yes, he believed the doctors. He don't believe Muhammad Therefore, the scholar said the meaning of Ashadu anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah. An yusaddaqa fi ma akhbar. Wa an yuta'a fi ma amar. Wa an yujtanaba ma naha anhu wa zajar. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That you obey what he order, that you stop yourself from what he forbid, forbidden for you, and to believe in everything he said. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. 
not like the deviant sect says like Amr ibn Ubaid he said about the hadith he heard from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. he said if Abdullah ibn Mas'ud himself he told me this hadith I said I don't believe in it if Rasulullah told me this hadith by himself I will not accept it if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk it to me directly I will say this is not right this is the deviant sects and this narration about Amr ibn Ubaid al-Bukhari said that he narrated in his book in Khalq of Al Ibad and Abdullah ibn Ahmed in the book Kitab al-Sunnah yes brother that there is people raised not to respect the Sunnah to the Prophet what he said what he used to do people when you told him when you tell, when you're now listening to people talking about the sunnah if you are a weak person if your deen your iman is not strong enough to follow to practice all what the Prophet ﷺ said don't make your don't make this to push you to talk bad about the Prophet ﷺ sunnah talk bad about the people who are following the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ make fun of them Oh, making fun of person has a beard, or his tail is short, or his, his dress is not uh, going all the way down under his uh, ankles. Ankle. He's making fun of that, and this is what the Prophet ﷺ used to do. This is the way he was. He used to dress, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he said, "This is the dress for the mu'min." And people today making fun of a lot of sunnah. They look at the sunnah as a minor things. Oh, this so we talk about the new issue, the big issues. Subhanallah. I was telling one sheikh, I was giving a piece of advice for one of my brother once. He's shaving beer. I told him, yeah, it's sunnah. He said, yeah, all of the problems finish. That's the only problem we have it now. It's my beer. I shaving beer or not? I said I have start with this problem to solve down, to finish. If we finish this problem, then we we'll go to the bigger one. <laughs> it's not the matter of shaving or not. No, I'm not Allah is talking about. This. I'm talking about this feeling in his in his mind, this mentality. This is, means he don't know how to act, how to behave with the sunnah. If you have a good manners. Like in Imam Malik rahimahullah, he never narrate hadith while he's not making wudu. Ayyub al-Sukhtiyani rahimahullah ta'ala, when he was, rahimahullah ta'ala, when he was saying, qala Rasulullah sallallahu many times he cried. He couldn't say it like this easily like today we are doing. People with some of the, the tabi'een, when he said, qala Rasulullah sallallahu his color changed. It's a heavy thing. It's the Prophet ﷺ respecting him, ta'ziru sallallahu wa tawqiru, which it means respecting him. It's a clear order from Allah subhanahu wa taala to us to respect him so much. And the scholar said, if he passed away, we still have to respect his sunnah. You're not allowed to make your voice louder than Hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Somebody saying, "Qala Rasulullah," you're not allowed to talk and make your voice louder than the one who narrating the Hadith. Or when I said, "Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam," said, "Okay, what's the Quran says? What's the uh, this scholar says? What this Sheikh says?" If you hear something from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, a clear, authentic Hadith. You have to say, I have to obey. I believe in it. I stop here, inshallah, because we are going to have another lecture and we will continue talking about behaving with our parents, with the wife, with her husband, husband with her, wife with his wife, and the morals of behaving with each other in our community. As a Muslims, also inshallah with the non-Muslims, 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those people who the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was asked what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was asked I just told you when you hear the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one of the things you have to say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam second you have to listen when we say qala rasulullah you have to listen not allowed to talk so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked about the things that will let the people enter the Jannah he said husnul khuluq the good manners the most things that will let the people get into to the Jannah it's the heaviest things in your it's the heaviest kind of de- de- good deeds you will have it in the Day of Judgment they are in a house in the middle in the top of the Jannah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad